Hey, we've got a 2002 Volkswagen Beetle with a 2 liter and automatic. I had replaced the uh, fan control module due to that the original one just I don't know, just died, wasn't controlling anything. When it did, um, fortunately for me, the Volkswagen dealership parts department was closed on a Saturday evening. So I had to order one to uh, get into uh, the uh, local parts store and picked it up on Sunday. However, uh, that unit, I tell you, it was just making its own decision on when it was turning things on and off and got pretty confusing. So I had to go back and look at basically all the sensor input to the control module which uh, to uh, just to determine prove myself that yes that is the problem um, so that fan control module yes it does control the uh, signal or the voltage to the uh, AC clutch the compressor clutch anyway so what we're looking at right now is the high pressure sensor that's G65 um, trying to understand that signal there's only one pressure sensor and that's what it is a sensor not a switch and that is mounted on the high side there is nothing on the low side so this thing looks at the high side pressure uh, and it will shut the system off from what I've read there is a um, there's a individual who's put together a pretty good document and I'm gonna try to put a link to that document it's uh, for an A4 basically you know Volkswagen same thing on um, on this uh, video in the uh, comments anywho um, so yeah when I think it's like 17 and a half when I went to the Bentley book 17 and a half PSI will actually shut or disengage the clutch on the uh, compressor so what we're looking at right now is the signal with the uh, pressure sensor off of the system so we're looking basically at zero PSI and I've got the uh, scope set up and, and let me back up and say this this is pulse width modulation so basically what's going to happen is as the pressure changes the pulse width is also going to change and it will get longer um, as you go now I'll, along with this I have a DVM to help you kind of understand what you're looking at as far as the voltage I mean that's what some of the people were looking at with the DVM because on this system I don't know I've got a uh, Yes, I wasn't prepared for this, but I've got one of these cheap VAG X Tool, I think it's 401, and I could not figure out how to uh, read that pressure sensor. But on this year, I don't believe, looking at all the signals um, that I could find for all the wiring, that I don't know that this year actually reports back to any other controller, and you can't communicate with it. So if you want to check the sensor it appears to me this is really going to be the only way that you can check it so this is what we're looking at again this is zero psi it's off of the system the car is on and i've got the scope set up this is a times 10 probe at uh, 0.5 volts so as we can see um it's just a little over you know close to 12 volts and i've got it set up at uh, two milliseconds per division so if we actually change this you'll see multiple pulses here and again it's not frequency if you if you saw a change in frequency you would actually see the pulses right in and out so I'm going to turn it off put it back in the system so you can see the difference in the pulse width right now we're probably about a half a division so again I'm going to turn it off this is the voltage with it basically at zero psi
So what I'm using with this is just a pin pierced through the wire. You see that? Um, we can get that signal just to it. Get my light. I can get in here and see what I'm doing. Alright, so everything's back together. I'm going to turn the car, turn that uh, ignition on. Alright, so right now we're reading about 100 psi, it's static, so the high and low are uh, 100 psi. So as you can see now the pulse width has gotten longer. The voltage on the DVM now, about 2.5 volts. So that's what you're looking at at 100 psi on the high side. Again, it does not read the low, only the high. You see, again, don't get more, it's just the pulse that's, pulse width that's actually changing. So I'm going to start it up. Uh, pressures will change. We'll see a change in the DVM. I'm going to save this before I do this. I've noticed, and I don't know if this is going to be the case, but when I've had this thing off, the pressure sensor off, put it back on, sometimes that clutch doesn't want to engage. I don't know if it takes a reset or not. Let me just check this out. Alright, so that's with the car running, the AC on. The high side pressure is about 160 psi. About 90. About 93 degrees right now in the garage. This is basically what I've seen over the last couple of days working with this. Like I can say it took me couple of days because I mean you know I had returning electronic parts to a uh, parts store which I was really surprised that they they took it back no questions asked but I I uh, I'm there quite a bit but. so you see what this is again this is this was normal voltage that I saw with the DVM um, got up at times so like 400 or 4.2 volts something like that Yeah, this is the first time the car's been started up, not actually up to temp, it's not in the sun, so, so the pressure will go up once, you know, it actually starts heating, the AC is really working well, so, um, what I can tell you is, and this has been my experience with these Volkswagens because of, and again, you can take a look, there, there are so many signals that are going to that controller like this, and though this is a, like I say, pulse width modulation, I imagine they're basically using it as a, like an analog, I think the DVM, an analog signal to a comparator. It just kills the clutch, makes a decision, right, just with the comparator to uh, disengage the clutch. If the pressure gets too high, the voltage gets too high. What that is, I'm not sure. Like I said, the individual who put together this document has put together a table, and they, it wasn't done evidently on a, um, a table, you know, just with uh, known pressures and adjusting that pressure over and uh, to for the pressure but I this is and I hope this helps uh, tell you what it was uh, quite interesting it was very frustrating trying to prove myself that yes that module the new one um, was bad right out of the box and again I'd recommend for this situation for this component you go to Volkswagen. I mean, it cost me $200. Uh, we're the part at the at my auto parts store. Uh, it's not really their fault here again. I mean, these, it, but anyway, that one cost me $140. It was well worth the $60. This was one heck of a headache for me to go check everything out. Again, this is not the only like signal like this. I believe there's another pulse width modulated signal um, to this module. 
I can't remember, if, I don't know if it's the temperature or if it's the load signal uh, from what I have read. Anywho, this is, what, uh, this is what I found. I hope this is helpful. It helped me. If you're interested in that signal and whether or not it's working, the DVM will probably get you a good idea of what's going on. Um, if you really want to know what it's looked like, then you've you got to have an oscilloscope. In a lot of cases, a lot of these, these sensors now, it's almost what you have to have. All right. Thanks for watching.